Hi, welcome. My name's Alwyn. Yesterday I was, had my rookie's hat on. Today I've got my substance hat on. Um, thank you all for coming today. Um, hopefully you'll get something out of the uh, demonstration that I give in substance. I'm just covering substance alchemist and substance painter today. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the new features that are coming. Um, next week is Adobe Max. I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, Adobe Max. It's kind of Adobe's big marquee event that they hold each each year in LA, um, main stage is, I think it's 10,000 people just on the main stage alone. It's, it's huge, but there's some really big announcements coming next uh, with, the, with the new releases. Um, how many people here have used Substance? Okay, cool. And Alchemist? Substance Alchemist? A couple of people. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to show, uh, and a predominantly painter, right? What about designer? few people have used designer as well. Excellent. Um, just let me reboot this back, get this back up. So who's using it in a work environment or are just people using it at home and playing around with it, are they? Work environment? I'm going to do just a, a quick presentation just to show, you know, sort of the tool set, who's sort of using it, and just even, you know, talk about the industry, what other industries are outside of visual effects that are actually using substance, because there's actually, um, you know, some really major industries that are, are, are adopting substance now, and, and I'll talk about the reasons why that's happening. Uh, let's just pull this back up. And even just watching that video, there was, you know, student work in that video. And that's, that's a real testament to the actual software itself, that it's, it's easy to pick up, it's easy to learn. And, you know, when you're on the job and people can pick up the software really quickly, it's a, it's a major advantage. Uh, the, the, the training material that goes with it is, um, is super great and Wes is really easy to listen to. So let's just throw it back over to the, the main window now if we can. Can you try it now? Thanks, mate. Cheers. So I'm just going to yeah, we'll stand up and walk through this. And I don't want it to be all about a presentation. I'm just going to quickly go through this. So, you know, essentially what is substance? It's, a, it's texturing and material authoring. So it, it's, it's made for 3D texturing. So it's taking something that's in um, 3D model and bringing it to life through materials. Um, I used to be, and I've been, like I said, I've been a texture artist for, for the good part of, you know, 15 plus years and you know I started back when it was sort of Photoshop and then we moved into body paint and then I got into Mari big time and substance quite recently so for visual effects it's only really come on the scene in the last sort of five years and um, just with, with the feature developments that uh, towards visual effects it's made it really interesting but I actually watched uh, a lot of the videos that um, uh, Naughty Dog did when they did, uh, released Uncharted and it, I, I found it really fascinating how uh, productive they were and being able to use these material libraries uh, with studios all around the world and I thought you know what that could really work for for visual effects because in visual effects we get really lazy with 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 texturing and and we just you know because we have such uh, large amounts of render power we think we can do you know six yeah, 8k textures and and really just throw uh, everything at it so I really like the idea of you know procedural particularly as a texture artist because you know we would spend a lot of time spinning our wheels. You'd get in there, you'd get a, a, a you know hero asset, and you know there'd be lots of iterations, and you would have to you know tweak spec maps, and somebody else would do it slightly differently, and then it would go into lighting, and it wouldn't be reacting as you would expect it to. And there was this endless cycle of back and forth, and then you'd start another asset, and then it would come back, and we would you know ultimately become a bit of a bottleneck in the whole visual effects pipeline. So when I started, uh, I, and this was back in Australia, I started working um, on Thor Ragnarok, and that was when you know I said to the studio, "Hey, you know what? We should give this a bit of a trial, just even to do uh, the the amount of props that we had for the for the throne room." So we we got a couple of license of it, and it, we quickly discovered that um, that it was a, a very efficient and productive tool, and it saved us a lot of time. We were able to actually texture a lot of assets procedurally. And you know we would hold off on doing any hand painting whatsoever, and then send that down the pipeline, 
and we found that a lot of these assets were actually getting through and being approved without any hand painting happening. So it was just like, well, there would be minor tweaks, you know, add a little bit of dust here, a little bit of dirt there, and it would come back, but we were able to iterate really, really quickly. So um, we started to recognize the power of that, and then also the material library, being able to have a centralized material library that when I'm working on an asset, and you know somebody, you know, particularly you know, when you think of like the, the throne room, there was a lot of gold, there was a lot of marble, there was a lot of um, common materials that texture artists would be ultimately working on as a team. So we were able to create these materials, get them approved, and then other people would be able to pull these materials down and have a starting point to work from, um, and then add those hand-painted uh, details as, as necessary. So it was fantastic, fantastic for that sort of stuff. Um, and even just, you know, Hella's, I did Hella's like costume and it's, it's pretty subtle, but like her patterning on it, you know, I was able to do that procedurally and when, when they were asking about changes for, do you guys want a selfie? Do you want, do you want me to take the photo? You? <laughs> um, I was able to change the pattern really quickly. It was just through sliders, scale and, uh, you know, fully procedurally, fully procedural, non-destructive. And it was just, it was a breath of fresh air and even working in the PBR workflow that, you know, when we're rendering inside Substance Painter and then taking that on using the, the HDRIs that had been shot for lighting, um, we were getting the same results. So it was, it was awesome. So just quickly going through this. So like I said, you know, it's, it's now I think 98% of AAA games around the world is using Substance. Pretty much every game it's being touched by substance in some shape or form. So I know people that are getting hired specifically for being substance designer artists, you know, so this, it's creating new, new opportunities as well with the software. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen like ArtStation and the crazy sort of work that people are doing just by using designer. It's, it's kind of blurring, blurring typical PC. I hate PCs. Um, Thanks. Um, it's blurring the, 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 the lines between modeling and texturing now. We're seeing, you know, where people are pushing the texture maps a lot further and actually using it for modeling, which is really interesting. I've got a really great example in here, which I'll show you. Um, film and animation, I've just spoken about that. Now, you know, pretty much all the major uh, studios around the world are, are using and using substance and you know, I went on a tour um, visiting a lot of the studios a couple of years ago and, and just seeing them actually rendering full environments using material libraries and, and you know, it was just incredible. Architecture visualization, I talk, talked a little bit about this yesterday with the advancements in real-time technology and, and hardware. We're seeing a, you know, a lot more architecture visualization companies using Substance, you know, obviously for VR, for these immersive reality experiences that go with sort of architectural visualization. And the bit, so these are the two big ones that we're focusing on is actually architecture and design. These are the industries that we think at the moment um, have the most amount of growth. We're pretty much, you know, captured uh, game, uh, video and, and film. Um, design is a really exciting space. Um, you know, people are now seeing this synthetic photography where instead of going out on set and taking, you know, spending hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars for these photo shoots, they're able to replicate things in 3D uh, materials and all the rest of it and be able to create these environments without spending that sort of money. You think about like Ikea or Caterpillar, you know, do you guys know Caterpillar, the big machinery yeah. So even though digitizing their, their full catalog of um, machinery, so IKEA, when you look at their catalog, nothing in that is real. Everything is digitized. Everything is 3D. It's really just doing 3D assembly. So they create the assets and have this huge library of assets, and then they, they make these, uh, these assemblies of 3D for their catalog. So, and that is where a lot of these big companies are going. They just see the time and so, uh, save saving lots of money in doing this. Um, so the tool set, there's actually a couple more in here as well, but the, the main one, so Painter, you guys will use Painter, your artist-friendly sort of tool, it's great. Um, Substance Alchemist sits in between Designer and Painter. So actually, I'm gonna give a shout out to, to Nicola, the guy that works at Nordis. He's, there's, there's a guy that works at Nordis, I can't, um, he's unfortunately, he's at uh, Adobe Max giving a presentation in Alchemist, but there's a local Serbian guy that is an absolute rock star at... Uh, 
What's his name? That's what I said, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Close, give or take, right? Um, but he's, yeah, he, he's, he's just, he's, he embraced it from the start, and he, he went on a crazy mission of creating 100 materials in 100 days, and um, he is uh, one of our beta testers and does an amazing job. Substance designer, a few people know about, so that's for you more, t you know, technical artists. So this is really, if you cannot find a material either in Substance Painter on Substance Source, then you go back to the grassroots and you're actually creating materials from the ground up using a node uh, network. And it's extremely powerful and um, it's extremely fast as well. So like I said, there's people doing crazy things with it on, on, uh, that I see on, um, on ArtStation. So yeah, I'm not gonna stay to that. This is a good this is a look at Substance Painter. We've all seen that. Uh, has it, are many people using Substance Source? Okay, cool, a couple of people. I mean, if you're in a work environment, Substance Source to me, and I'm gonna show a little bit more about that in a minute as well. Substance Source is, the, is an amazing resource. Um, you know, if you can't find a material on there as a starting point, then I would be, uh, I'd be you know, challenging you because I think that um, there's over, or there's, I think there's almost 4,000 materials there and each, each month they're doing new drops of materials. Um, they invite, artists to do signature drops so there's, you know they're supporting the community and there's some amazing artists out there like I said so um, they invite them on to do their own sort of unique collections um, you know just even from one material can, can cre create you know an almost unlimited amount of variations from one material so when I was working in the industry you know I'd go in there basically find the ones the ones that are close to what I needed download them and then be able to create variations based on that one material uh, and I'll show you a little bit of that in a minute. So this is a quick look at uh, Alchemist, which I'm going to show you anyway. It's just a bit of a... And then we're talking about... So with Substance Designer and creating ma materials, there's, there's re essentially three different ways you can do it. You can scan in the physical material, you can import that data into Substance Designer, and then um, add uh, procedural details on top of that. So there are fully exposed parameters that then you can go bring into Substance Painter or, or you know, one of the other apps and actually control you know, how the scale of all this stuff, it's non-destructive. Um, or it can be fully procedural. You know, so like I said, there's people doing crazy stuff that's fully procedural um, or just straight scan. And here's a quick look at it. If people haven't seen Designer, this is, this is a quick look of it. So here's an example of uh, you know, a physical piece of leather that's been scanned in. All the lighting information's been taken out. It's been separated out. It's and that whole node is a, is a template. So essentially, you're just dragging in an image. And it can be from the internet. It can be taken from your smartphone. And you can create a material very, very quickly through that. So all this, this example here, so all the stitching is fully procedural. So the client... Client comes back to me and says, hey, I want, I want to just change the specular highlight on this. I'd love to change the stitching pattern. Um, I'd love to change the color, whatever. I can just do it through a series of sliders, which is amazing again. Really high fidelity materials. Uh, integration, so all major gaming engines, uh, online render, offline renderers, and you know, 3D through, uh, through plugins or, um, or natively through, uh, through the 3D program. So there's more and more being added to this li list every, every sort of month. How does it work? Is it, I mean, it's the positive feedback for Maya. Yeah, it's all good. It's, I mean, yeah. Live link, so working directly. So there's a uh, plugin that you can uh, live link to so working, painting in Substance Painter and it's updating in real time in Unreal Engine or Unity. So you're getting that direct response straight away. You can see exactly how everything's reacting and it's one for one. It's a, really, it's a, it's a pleasure, to, pleasure to use and work with. And like I said, Substance Academy, so for people that haven't um, dived into the software. This is a really great online academy for beginners, for intermediate, for more advanced people. It's, uh, you know, when, when working, and I've seen it, where I've gone in and done a presentation at a studio, and studios actually use that resource as training material to say, hey, you know what, if you're a newbie in Substance Painter, go online, just check out these training uh, videos, and the, it's, it's really, really good. So I'm just going to show you some artwork. And this, you know, some of, I think most of this is student artwork, actually. I got this from the rookies. 
because I thought I'd just uh, give that a plug while I'm up here. But yeah, this is all student artwork. So again, we're seeing like really senior people as well as juniors that pick this up and are doing incredible artwork already. Yes, this is all student work actually. And different styles as well. It's not all photorealism. Um, we're seeing a, a, you know, a huge amount, array of different styles. And I just wanted to show you this one here, which is, hopefully that's going to work, yeah. So this is taking this piece of geometry, which is really basic, and then creating a really sophisticated material to be able to, um, you know, texture this asset. You know, and that's, that's the, the sort of the gray area that I was talking about between texturing and modeling. It's pretty nuts, isn't it? And that concludes that. So, what I wanted to do, and you know, because because most people have, oh, I don't need to go on. That up. Um, I wanted to show you. We've got the. Has anyone played with the launcher? We're all very quiet. <laughs> I think we need some beers in here. Can we have some beers, please? <laughs> Um, going to log into this. So the launcher is kind of, it's, it was new, new-ish, um, and it's it's just a, it's a great place just to be able to sort of launch the software. It gives you you know the main tab here. These are the latest art articles with substance. So you know if you're and they're really great case studies. So depending on what industry you're looking for or whatever, there's there's usually a case study in there of how people have used substance and really pushing the boundaries with it. So up the top, we've got our different tabs here. So Substance Painter, and these articles here are all related to Substance Painter. It auto automatically updates to the latest version for you, or you can roll back depending on you know, where, you're, where you're sort of sitting with it all. Um, you know, again, live link to Substance Academy if you're wanting to learn it. And, uh, and you know, if, you've, if you've got feature requests or whatever, then you can go on here and add that sort of stuff. Um, like I said, you can launch straight from in here just by holding Shift up the top. Again, it's a very similar uh, setup for each of the different tabs. The one cool thing that they did add was, uh, was Substance Source here. So I can directly just add a material straight into um, one of the apps from here. So I can push it across and it'll automatically send it. So if I'm doing a quick search, I can just add it straight into here. Uh, and there, uh, there's, a new tab, there's a couple of new tabs coming and this is just more about new features coming. So I, I don't think I can talk about which which company it is, but um, they're going to have a, 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 they've got a partnership with a, a, a 3D marketplace. So you'll be able to download 3D models, bring that straight into your texture and into your substance painter and actually start using that model. So, um, and then the other tab will be if you're, you know, using Unreal Engine or Maya, you'll be able to actually send materials straight across to external apps as well, which is pretty cool. Um, I wanted to show you sort of the, I'm on the internet, so I'm just going to show you what Substance Source looks like. If anyone wants to read my emails, there you go. Probably abusing Nicola. <laughs> Substance Source, like I said, is amazing. Um, and we'll have a look at some of the materials. We look at some of the, the new assets that were dropped. So they did. I think they dropped 580 new ones that were targeted towards architecture visualization. So everything is thoroughly researched. So all these materials are exactly, you know, real world materials and are all, you know, named according to specific or specs for these different industries, right? So they're not just making them up and going, okay, well, let's just make it up all willy nilly. Uh, everything is, you know, you're looking at the different tiles, different marble surfaces. So when you click into one of these, you've got a few options. It'll give you a preview of the, the variations that you can create sort of straight off the bat. Uh, and also, when you do, go to down, so you can see the variations, just you know, some basic variations that you can get from this one material. And it'll load a little 3D player. So inside here, so if I'm working on a show, maybe I'm not 100% you know, sure this is the correct material for me, so I can just go, th go through and actually just play with some of the sliders and try and you know, get as close as possible to that material that I'm looking for without even downloading it. I just really want to make 100% sure this is the material that I want. Uh, I can just change that onto a plane. 
and then just, yeah, like I said, I can pl start playing around with the, the, the variations in here. And if, oh, there's presets already up here. And down here, you've got this download tab. So you've got two options here. <clears throat> so I always tell people it's a really good, good place. If you're wanting to learn Substance Designer, you can download the um, SBS file and the SBSAR file. So one's for Substance Painter, the other one's for Substance Designer. So you actually, they're actually giving you the complete node network of how that material was made. So you can then open that back up in Designer and actually add things to it and republish it. So, or you can look at it, reverse engineer it and see how it was actually created just to start learning how, how people have created these materials. So you, yeah, you're essentially getting the, the material for free. So, yeah, like I said, you can play around with the, the, the different options, specular and all the rest of it highlights. If you're happy with it, then you can download it. Um, if I download it through the web browser, it's downloading into my uh, downloads directory. I have the option inside Substance Painter to uh, open Substance Source directly inside that, and it'll download to my shelf. So that's pretty cool. i just make sure I go over that. So, yeah, that's any questions about Launcher? No one's played with it, right? Okay, cool. So the first thing I want to show you is Substance Alchemist. And I'm just going to quickly do up a material. Um, so like I said, Substance Alchemist is really taking pre-existing materials and being able to blend between them. So you're not having to do anything technical. All you're doing is basically taking these, dropping them into a layer stack, and having fun with it. So we've got... A few options up here. We've got explore. So this is where, you know really just looking at materials that come, get shipped by default. So I can just you know add a material straight on here, and then I can play around with it, see what variations come with it. I'm really just exploring. If, to in, inspire is is taking a material. So you know maybe I'll take this material here. And this is really good for more design. You know you might design focused companies that a client comes to me and says, hey. You know, I've got this leather. Um, I've got this leather, and I've got this image. This is going to be the marking material. We need to use this color palette for our materials. So you can quickly come through and just grab. And I'm just going to grab. Oh, sorry, I'm going to grab Alchemist Inspiration. So I can grab any image. You know, maybe this is from the client. I could just drag it in here, and generate variations based off this color palette. So again, it's just really super fast at being able to create. So there's a few options in here. So I can you know, either up the number of colors that are being sampled from the Im image. I can clear that and then generate more based off this. I've got different options for you know, what, what the actual um, procedure is for, for selecting the colors off the image. Once I've got these, you know, then I can go through Actually, that displacement looks a bit high, so I can just pull that down a little bit. So once I've, you know, I'm happy with these, I can just drag them straight down here and start create, creating my own personal sort of collections based off this. So I've got my material. Then after that, I can actually just go through and go, all right, cool, now I'm going to build off this. Maybe I'm not happy with the actual stitching pattern. Um, then it exposes all my parameters here, and I can go through and just change, uh, you know, this, the seam ascent. So if I wanted to change the, uh, let's just change. What do we want to change here? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff I can do. I can go tense quilt. I can add, like I said, I can add um, patterns and generators on top of this as well. So I've got generator here, um, you know, I've got the texture where I can add a whole lot of different generators. And these are all being created from Substance Designer as well. Um, it's the, the embroidery one is kind of fun. I like adding something here. So I can just go through here. I can select out an, an image. Uh, Let's just pull this up here. So let's demo. And it, and it creates, you know, this embroidered straight away. I've already got something, you know, maybe it's a client logo, whatever it is. But I can keep adding on to this. Once I get to a point where I'm really happy with this material, I can then export that out as a, as a substance file that I can bring into Substance Painter as well and keep building on top of that. 
Um, so I'm going to go back to create. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just clear this. And what I wanted to do was really, and I was just getting inspiration from walking around the streets of, of Belgrade coming in when it started raining, and I was looking at the paving, paving pattern, and I thought, you know what, it'd be cool to actually try and replicate something like that. So I'm going to try that. So I'm just going to grab a basic uh, mater uh, material here, which is a raw slate. And then I'm going to add a generator on top of that, which is a, a pavement one, which I think is really cool. So, and, you know, as a texture artist, trying to get something like this to tile in the old days used to be a friggin' nightmare. Um, so I can come in here, you know, and I can make the spacing between the bricks a little bit thicker. I can change the, you know, tilt, so I'm making them a little bit older making, give them that feel. I can change, uh, you know, and if I'm not happy with that pattern, I can just quickly come through here and go, you know what, this is the pattern they're looking for, right? So it just changes it on the fly. I do like the, uh, the European fan though. So I like, yeah, give it a bit of tilt. And maybe I'll just push the displacement a little, a little bit. So we can do that. And now I want to add, you know, maybe I'm going to add some, um, some moss to it. So instead of adding a filter or a generator, I can just go back into my materials, do a, do a quick search for, for moss, drag that on top. So it's really simple. Like, it, like I said, it's like Photoshop. You just, you know, it's a layer stack. You're just adding, you're doing sort of blends between it. Um, adding these generators, existing materials, just really just trying to create a complex material. So for this one, maybe I want to do, you can just adjust the, the actual um, blend mode. So I'm going to do curvature and I'm going to do cavity there just to pull it in. And maybe I want to just add, um, bring that balance up a little bit because I'm just going to do something like that. And maybe I want the color just to blend with the actual base material itself so it's not so saturated. So I can just blend between the two. If I'm not happy with the lighting, I can go back in and just check my environment here. Uh, maybe want to do something that's like that. And we can just see how that's reacting. Yep, kind of happy with that. So, and then I go back into my generators and I've got a whole bunch of weathering ones. I like to add, I love the water. You know, instantly you're getting some really cool effects just by adding something like that. I can drop the level down. Um, and if we look at the, what, the, what it's actually doing here, we can see that uh, it's essentially just creating our, our maps. And these are all the maps that we used to have to hand paint, you know, individually. So it's just creating all these for us. So we've got this material. I'm not happy with that. Maybe I want to add some, you know, some dust, which I'm going to, Bring that back down. I'm going to make it a little bit more wet so I can play with my dirt roughness to make it sort of more like mud. Bring that quality, uh, quantity down just a little bit. And then I, my bricks are looking a bit dry, especially with that much water in there. So I can go back down to the, the base, base brick and just introduce some specular on top of the bricks. So I'm getting a feel for that a wet sort of street. And like I said, at any stage, I can go back through and just change what, the, what that looks like. Um, I can, yeah, I mean, you can play, you can add, so I'm going to add a splatter. So what this, this gives me a few slots here, so I can add some pre-existing Let's just get rid of that. And maybe I only just want to add like say five or something so we can add, you know, just some, we can add some debris, some debris, some leaves, some additional details on top of it. So you can, whoops, you can see here we've got some little sticks or whatever it is. So I can go through, I can actually change the pattern type if I'm not happy with that type of stick. Maybe I'm looking for a twig or whatever it is. It's just, like I said, it's non-destructive, fully procedural. And I can, I've got a bunch of slots there that I can add 
add stuff to, so maybe we add something else. European forest wood logs, sounds interesting. Um, and then, you know, I can go back again, maybe I want to add some little, some little pebbles. So I've got like a, uh, a generator here, which is a gravel one, I can throw that on top of there. Again, I can just drop that quantity down. Start playing with size variation. Let's pull that right down. Size variation. And I want it to match the, the base a little bit. And maybe I can just pull that down underneath everything. Maybe not that far. Just let it sit like that. Match the base color a bit more. So you get the idea. So really it's simple, you know, just layering, layering, layering. So once I've done that, like I said, I can go through now. Um, I can export this out as a uh, SBSAR file. You've got different options here. Or I can download them, uh, output them as texture, texture maps or texture images that I can bring into um, a 3D software and use it for look dev at that point. Um, so I've got one. So I'm just going to close it. Oh, Actually, what I'll do as well, I'll just, just quickly show you how it works if I've taken an image. So I'm going to just close out this one. And I've got this option here. So I'm just going to bring up this. And I've got image. I've just got like a stone. Let's just view that as a thumb. You can see this. It's just a... It's just an image that's been pulled off the internet. I can just drag that straight into there, and it gives me a couple of options. So this, this is, um, if you've got a, a light box set up and you can take multiple images using a light source, I don't know if you guys have seen that whole uh, series on, on how to create like a material using a series of images. So you can take your smartphone, point it down, if you've got an LED light, and just take a series of photos, so you're capturing light information on that material. You can input you know, up to eight images into here, and what it does, it basically reads all that lighting information, and there's really smart math behind this that sucks out all the lighting information and then essentially creates a material from that. Um, so I'm going to just do it with one image, just to show you how that looks. Shit, how am I going for time? Yeah, it's all good. So you can see this one's pretty horrible coming in see the tiling that's going on. Um, so if I have a look at the scan, what I want to do first is uh, delight it, take all the lighting information out of it. So I can just add this. And maybe I want to just add an adjust as well, because it's, uh, let's do that. It's pretty. It's going to desaturate it a little bit. It's a little bit flat. Cool. Um, and then I'd go through, and what I want to do is, is uh, equalize it. So I just want to flatten. Basically, it's almost like doing a height, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, what do you call that? High pass. That's what I was trying to say. Sorry. High pass. So I can just go on there. I can do a equalize. And then I can try and start, start tiling it. And it gives me this, this little gizmo here that I can then start moving. You can see, you know, there's a couple of obvious things which I can clone out, but you know, pretty quickly, if I just move this, you can see that it's doing a really good job at, of actually, you know, reading what the pixels are and trying to do a really nice blend, you know, without gone to the sort of the days we'd sit there and try and clone the end edges to try and get this thing tiling. So, I mean, you can do pretty sophisticated tiles in this very, very quickly just by, uh, by using this tool. So I can go through here. So if I'm not completely happy with it, I can go through and do a clone. Um, I can select a spot, and maybe it's a couple of obvious spots like this that I, you can just get rid of some areas. Um, you can see what it's doing. You know, and if I'm just using this as a rough material, as a base, so maybe I'll come through now and I just go, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm happy with this. I'm going to actually collapse, uh, save it as a, as a, as a, as a uh, material here. I'm just going to go that into my collection, save that, and I've got my rock here. So now I can get rid of that stack, 
cool. And there's a couple of things that I can do. I can either double click on it, which will give me back all the layers, or I can just start building on top of this. So I always have it here to go back to if I need to as well. So like I said, now I can go through and you know add, add, go, do exactly the same process that I was doing before, add a moss, whatever. It's time up. Are you kidding me? What? Does everyone want to stay for a bit longer than five minutes? Gee whiz. Somebody's ripped me off. Um, so again, you know, you can go through here, get rid of some of the, the, you know, just start building on top of your material. But, you know, you can see how simple it is just to take a photo that I've pulled down off the internet. And um, if a client gives to me, I can, you know, automatically start digitizing these materials and using them on my assets. So that's really cool. What I wonder, if I've, I've only got five minutes? That's crazy talk. Let's just pull up uh, Substance Painter. What I wanted to show you was like, yeah, the painting across Udoms. I don't know who's been waiting for that, but I've been waiting for it for about five years. Oh, and I wanted to show you something really cool with that. Shit, I'm under pressure now. Yes, okay, allow, get on. Um, so I'm going to open this recent file, which is a. Let's just open that. Let's go back up to demo. Let's go back up to SP. Let's go up to shoe. Keep it simple. Oh, yeah, that's actually it. Some people will geek out about this. But being able to see all your UV tiles is pretty cool. Whee! <laughs> Um, so we go back and I'm just going to show you kind of what, what's happening with it. I mean, this, this, they're demoing this next week. At, at day, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be demoing this, but anyway. Um, so you can see this, there'll be a couple of different things that happen. So let me just grab some uh, textures here and I can just start. Let me just add that on top of there. Ooh, that's ugly. Let's get rid of that one. Let's throw that one on. Scale is a little bit large, so I can just enlarge that to maybe 20. So you can see now there's this little icon here. So I've got the option of just clicking on that. And what it's allowing me to do is I can select exactly what tiles I want that on now as well. Um, oops, and I'll keep that on too. But, and here's the, beautiful th here's the beautiful thing though. When I went like this, I was like, awesome. I'm going to stick a black mask on here. I'm going to change color on this. And then I could just go like this, and it just went across everything. Do you know how rewarding that was to me? I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole set of tools that are coming with this. You know, when you think of, like, the warp tools and all the other cool tools that, um, that you get with some of the other programs to be able to manipulate it once it's in this, uh, in this, in this sort of state. Um, and that's why it took so long, you know, because they wanted to get it right and make sure it's time to wake up. Um, they wanted to make sure they got the toolkit right with it. So, but what, oh yeah, so I'm not going to have time to texture this whole thing, but I'm going to jump over here because I want to show you something else, which is, you know, when I'm in here, and I just wanted to show you how, what Adobe are thinking with these products, how it all sort of fits into their ecosystem. So essentially the substance suite is now under a new division, which is called 3 D and I. Um, and that includes 3D Dimension and also Project Arrow. So it's really building out a pipeline of 3D and it's going to be a separate offering to the Creative Cloud. So it's really just going to be for people that are really invested in that sort of industry. And the, you're, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I can actually export this out uh, into 3D Dimension. So that's more for the marketing team. So you can do your renders and sort of product placement and all that sort of stuff. But the, the, the materials get carried across into that. You know, all the whole materials are going to be linked into these various programs, so they're just going to get more and more powerful with the, um, with the adop uh, adoption of substance. So can I just swap that over, mate? Is that cool? Yeah. Just jump that. So what I wanted to do was just do something cool here and show you. Um, I've got an asset, which is R2-D2, uh, which I asked nicely, Nick. Okay, cool. Let's just show. So this is this is project project uh, arrow. 
that's in beta at the moment. Um, but it's essentially, you know, you've got a shoe, you're working, and now you've got a marketing department that, you know, have, have got an immersive experience that they want to do for their, for their side of it. So um, I can come in here and I can create. Uh, so I've exported my model and my textures from Substance Painter. I've saved it onto a drive. I can come through uh, and let me see if I can scan the floor just quickly. Let's see if it's going to give me something here. There's not much variation. Come on, Nick, give me some light. Ah, oh, there you go. Is that going to give me some? There we go. So I can just tap on that. So now I can just go through. So I've saved my asset with my materials. I can come through. And actually, I've got one of the shoes. So we can have a look what that looks like. So I can just grab that. I can place it on there. So you can think, you know, when you're in an environment with, you know, re, you know, when I'm, we're talking about sort of retail and all the rest of it, people can come through and actually check out, you know, so check out what the shoe looks like. But I actually wanted to do the uh, R2D2 because he's pretty cool. Nick, me so light. Um, so I'm going to go files, I'm going to go back out here, back out, back out, and I've got R2D2 there, images, I'm going to do 512. So you can see all the materials that have been exported outside of uh, Substance Painter. I can grab my asset, I can drop them on there. So you can see, you know, just even the level of detail that you're kind of getting with some of those materials. Can you guys see that? Yeah, so. And the other cool thing with this, yeah, the other cool thing with this is that I can tap on him. I can go through and actually start doing some animations with him as well. So I can um, create some behaviors. So I can add a trigger. And this is for touch. And maybe I want to add an action, which maybe is, let's make him bounce. Oh, he's probably going to hit the roof if I do that. I can add that. Maybe I want to add another action. Uh, sorry, another action. Uh, let's make him spin. So I've got it like that. Then I can bring him back because he's going to bounce pretty high. I can go into the preview mode. And then... So I can, I can, you know, record that. I can actually add images in there. I can make an actually, an, you know, assembly of different assets and actually do a whole scene as well, which is pretty cool. I think I had... Yeah. Cool. I must be over time now, am I? Sound effects, Nicola? So yeah, it's just, uh, it's really, it's, it's exciting time for Substance at the moment. People were really worried about what was going to happen and, a, you know, this big corporation buying up algorithmic and all the rest. I've been with them for a couple of years. And, you know, to be honest, what the, they're just, they're letting, you know, the, you know, the sort of the old team just carry on forward with what they're doing. The, you know, the, it's the old sort of cliche, you know, don't, don't try and fix something that's not broken. Um, and, you know, the guys are, they're an amazing team that are just constant de de constantly developing. And I was just going to quickly also show you some of the new features that are coming. Uh, you can have a read on there. So, you know, the, ne the next release is going to be more about the painting experience. So you'll be able to import in uh, Photoshop brushes. They're trying to get down to that Photoshop style. So essentially what they're trying to do is create, you know, Photoshop for 3D. That's what Substance Painter will be. Um, and they're spending a lot of time making sure that it's, you still, you know, have that beautiful texturing and painting um, experience with, with the 3D. Uh, like I said, pardon? Oh, you're not up there. Sorry, guys. Is it okay to do that, mate? Yeah, so being able to import in brushes, so that, that's the big push for the next one. Obviously, uh, you know, the tool set that goes with the, the whole painting across Unum's. We've got a, you know, um, the UV unwrapper, which is a big problem for some people in some industries because they don't want to deal with UV. I mean, actually, most of us don't want to deal with UVs, right? So they're coming up with smart ways to be able to kind of do automatic unwraps for people that don't want to deal with that. Uh, yeah, everything, just making things faster, being able to handle bigger assets, all, all the stuff that we sort of hope for in, in visual effects. So 
that concludes my presentation. I'm sorry I didn't have more time to do more stuff.